The genre of horror has been a captivating element of film, literature, and pop culture for centuries. While the spotlight often shines on the male antagonist, the impact of female villains, particularly in the horror genre, is often unappreciated. When we think of horror villain icons, we typically think of Freddy, Jason, Michael Myers, and if pressed for female villains, iconic figures like Annie Wilkes of Misery or the menacing Mrs. Voorhees of Friday the 13th come to mind. However, when we peel back the skin-crawling exterior of female horror villains, you will find an intriguing layer of societal critique and a twisted reflection on how society often mistreats and confines people in the deeper layers of characters in the genre. Here are five underappreciated female horror villains that you may not have, or probably, heard of. Tsuko Soma. The Battle Royale universe is rich and layered, and one character that stands out from the crowd is Mitsuko Soma. Her character is an unforgettable and chilling antagonist who leaves a lasting impression. While her peers desperately try to maintain their humanity amidst the bloodshed, Mitsuko adapts swiftly to the ruthlessness of her environment. As the horrific game progresses, she demonstrates a lethal efficiency in dealing death, swiftly establishing herself as a formidable adversary. She doesn't merely survive, she appears to relish in the morbid chaos, reveling in the fear she instills in others. To ensure her survival, Misuko employs manipulation as her weapon of choice, her silver tongue spinning webs of deceit, luring her classmates into a false sense of security before dealing a death blow. It's a chilling display of her survivalist instinct punctuated by the remorseless violence she uses to eliminate perceived threats. However, it's important to understand that her actions aren't driven by mindless sadism. They're born out of a deep-seated survival instinct, honed by years of trauma and neglect. This doesn't justify her deeds, but provides a chilling reminder of the lengths she's willing to go to ensure that she is the last one standing. Ghost. Ginger Snaps 2 introduces us to Ghost, an intriguing character whose complexity lies beneath her seemingly innocent exterior. This innocent facade becomes a breeding ground for one of the most captivating villains in the modern horror cinema. At first glance, she seems like a harmless teenager with a quirky obsession for comic books. This innocent image is further fueled by her status as a ward under Barbara's care. But as the plot thickens, however, this seemingly harmless girl unravels a darker, more sinister side. As it turns out, Ghost's childlike innocence is a well-crafted disguise that hides her true manipulative and cunning nature. My sister and I shared a room. Sleep over every night. Kind of. Underneath that sweet facade, Ghost is a ticking time bomb waiting to unleash her nefarious schemes. 
Like a master puppeteer, she maneuvers both the characters in the story and the audience, spinning tales that serve her interest and ultimately dictate the course of the film. Ghost redefines the parameters of a horror villain with her chilling transformation from a seemingly innocent girl to a master manipulator and it is a testament to the fact that that real terror often originates from the least expected corners, bringing a unique element of surprise in uncertainty. It was made worse by a growing desire to devour men. But she resisted, for she knew this would bring destruction and death. May Dove Kennedy Dipping her toes in a world that continuously pushes her away due to her peculiar mannerisms and the unavoidable presence of a lazy eye, May emerges as a uniquely misunderstood character in a world of psychological horror cinema. Masterfully portrayed by Angela Bettis, May is a picture of desolation, yearning for acceptance, companionship, and a touch of normalcy in her life. Yet her odd behaviors, unconventional appearance, and social awkwardness paint her as an outcast, leaving her in the company of just one, a doll named Susie, a haunting strange gift from her mother. This eerie companion is not just an object, it becomes a metaphor for her life, influenced by her mother's haunting words, if you can't find a friend, make one. Each failed attempt at a connection acts like a punch to her self-esteem, inflating her sense of worthlessness and alienation, and skewing her perspective on aesthetics. Instead of recognizing holistic beauty of individuals, she becomes fixated on individual body parts, which she sees as epitomes of perfection. Hands, legs, necks, they all represent the fragments of beauty that May desperately covets which concludes in a horrific yet deeply sorrowful climax that brings her torment and isolation full circle as she creates a perfect friend. This is a sanctuary! Christabella Silent Hill, a chilling journey of psychological horror, serves up an antagonist to remember. Christabella, played by Alice Creech, imposes a menacing presence that contributes heavily to the haunting ambiance of the film. The twisted morality, bent fanaticism, and dramatic demise leave an indelible imprint on viewers. As we delve beneath the surface of Christabella's enigmatic aura, we are confronted with a disturbingly skewered moral compass. A fanatic to the core, her religious zeal blinds her to the atrocity she commits in the name of faith. Convinced of her righteousness, she carries out brutal executions of those she deems sinners, justifying her horrifying acts with a warped logic and religious fervor. Heresy. Burn her! Burn her! Her sense of right and wrong, dangerously distorted by the zealous beliefs, fuels a reign of terror that is captivating as it is chilling. This twisted morality, married with an unyielding conviction, cements Christabella's position as a female villain that continues to send shivers down our spines. What's going on? Death. Miss Carmody. In the quiet corners of a small town, we meet Miss Carmody, portrayed by Marsha Gay Harden, a woman deeply rooted in her religious convictions, yet slightly off kilter with some of the town's folks' norms. As the Mist, a character in its own right, wraps the town in a chilling, monstrous embrace, the eccentric Miss Carmody begins to emerge from the shadows. 
Several of the townsfolk get trapped in the supermarket as the terror of the mist takes hold. Miss Camardi astutely harnesses the power of fear to bend the survivors to her will. With the supermarket serving as her pulpit, her words weave an intoxicating spell of dread, taking a darker turn as she manipulates the group into believing that the only way to appease what she claims is God's wrath is to offer a human life. We want the boy. You we get want back. the boy. No, you, get back. you get back. Come on now. Her fanatic fervor and astute manipulation set off a chain reaction of events within the confines of the supermarket, illustrating just how explosive unregulated fear can be even after her demise. Miss Komodi paints a chilling portrait of how our own reality and the impacts of the power of persuasion and belief can be. It's from them. The blood of human sacrifice must come from them. The blood of expiation. So, what other female villains would you include on this list? Some of the lesser villains. Drop it in the comments. Also, thank you for tuning each week to the Pop 5. I hope you're enjoying some of the changes that we have done. If you do, drop a like. If you're not subscribed, please do that. You don't have to hit the notification bell. We'll be there when you want to catch up with us. As always, thank you for stopping by. And until the next, see ya.